In this video, we got a little food debate. What are your favorite restaurants in the San Gabriel Valley? And here we got 626 native Ryan Holmes, half black, half Chinese. That's good. Please introduce yourself. Ryan Alexander Holmes, 100% Asian, 100% black. That's how I define myself so people don't try to define me. I define myself. My bad. And I'm black and Chinese. No, you can. <laughs> well, what was your I'm joking. Chinese name? I'm joking. Uh, my, my name, my Chinese name is He Ren An. Um, they named me in Chinese first, then they got the Ryan from the Ren An. Yeah. So, hey, we got some good 626 talk. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smile Sauce at smilelassauce.com. I'll say this to me, to me, this is just my opinion. I think the San Gabriel Valley, in a way, has the best Chinese food in the world, including Asia. I mean, Damn, I'm from the SGV, and I want to agree with oh, that. Hold on, hold on. We got we got to get quick background, guys. We did a whole podcast with yeah. Ryan. You could watch it right there. But uh, you spent time in China. We've all spent time yeah. in China, respectively. Yeah. Well, we've been times. to Taiwan many times, right? Taiwan. We've been to Taiwan. We've been to Taiwan. Taiwan. Spent time in Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Been to Singapore. No, not yet. I gotta okay. Go. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, regardless, we've all had experience eating food in Asia. Yeah. And David is making this statement. So I think David, let's hear you out. What do you mean? Here's why. Here's why. Yeah, why? Here's why. I like it. I like it though. All right. I get it. We can't get Asia ingredients, so you're missing out on that angle. So let me just mitigate what I'm about to say by saying, okay, that's the downside. But the upside is the diversity is there in a way that in Asia is almost too difficult to find because usually half the cuisine in any major American city, uh, Asian city, Beijing, Shanghai, let's just say Taipei half the food is already like just from one place. Okay. And then the other half is like, you know, maybe Japanese concepts or okay. uh, maybe a few Sichuan restaurants here or there. But for the most part, but in 626, it's like 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 or like five, 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 five from 20 different places. No, no. So, so mm. for example, more di- right, more you, you know all the plazas, you know the San Gabriel Plaza, you know all these yeah. different plazas in San Gabriel yeah. where it's like, there's actually seven different types of Chinese cuisine. Yes, yes, There's Korean yes, and Japanese within yes, one plaza. And, and the owners that's might true, be from true. there. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying that in a way, you never see that in Asia. So you're saying like you still have more options. Yes. But you well, still have more. Uh, it's almost like a microcosm of the entirety of Asia. In one place. Yes, yes, yes. So, that, that, but, so you're not saying that the, the, like the greatest restaurant, greatest Sichuan restaurant is in SGV. No. Okay, got it. Then I... I totally understand what you're saying. In like, terms of if we take into yeah. account people's actual human living patterns. Yes. Because most people are not Bourdain where you like yeah. travel and eat food for yeah. a living. Like, you know, yeah. like, when you, you only get to go, go, what, one, two miles? Let's be honest. Like, we're average people. We, we don't dedicate our life Dude, to food. We got to do other things. You're so, so right. So yeah. that's why I'm saying. I feel with so that spoiled then. I feel so spoiled actually because like, yeah, I didn't really think that because I just grew up there and I just eat Sichuan Tsai one day and then, I, you know, I'll get... Um, Shanghainese food the, the next day and then I'll go to Hong Kong cafe, cafe the next day. And it's like, I didn't really think about that. Like there's so much diversity within the Chinese cuisine that like I am spoiled. Well, because in a way, SGV and is a good. melting pot of Asian culture, yes. namely Chinese, but also a lot of there, other Asian cultures. But there's yeah. even like uh, the Korean spot is run by like some Chinese people from Korea or Koreans from China. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's because it's this uh, huge and it's diasporic. all and, it, and it's and it's different than like certain Chinatown restaurants because it's like it's catered to the people's taste that are from those places. Yes. That want to go there and taste home. Yeah. Chinatowns can yeah. be good, but they're often touristy spots. Yeah. And they have to cater to a lot of non-Chinese. Or, or, or they've been, let's be honest, and I'm not dissing this because I'm Canto, but like they've been Cantoized because the primary demographic in Chinatowns is Canto. So yeah, 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 yeah. The Sichuan true. spot just not going to be as spicy as a... Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so with that said, Ryan, <laughs> yeah. with the statement God. that Chinese food in the San Gabriel Valley might be the best. David, you said the best. That was what you said. I think it's the best place to go eat Chinese food in the world. Oh, it's the best place to go eat Chinese yeah, food. Yeah, obviously, if we're talking about Singapore is going to have better versions of have Singapore. We been, have we been uh, every place in the world to say that? Like, are enough places in the world to say that? Like, Well, it's probably... Is it better honest, than Queens? No, uh, to, be, to be honest, it's, pro- it's either between Queens, 626... True, actually... Because where are, the other, where are the other places that, There's no, no. that have that also the diversity yes. that David's talking about? Yeah, like, Queens will have it in a different okay. way. Yeah. Canada, to- Toronto, Vancouver, maybe, Australia. Yeah, maybe Vancouver. You want to yeah. say throw Sydney, Toronto? All right, yeah, yeah maybe, Markham, Markham maybe in, yeah, Australia. I, I think Markham, Australia. Toronto, Markham, Ontario oh, right, has an right, right, argument. Can, but no, 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 no. Let me say this about Vancouver. Too. Let me say this about Vancouver and Toronto. 
Yeah. They don't have the Southeast Asian diaspora. Oh, yeah. they don't have Southeast Asians in Australia? Not as, m- no, 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 in Canada. No, that's. Oh, you're saying just Canada? Yeah, I'm saying Mark, oh, okay. Markham and uh, I guess Richmond, oh, Vancouver, Markham, BC. Markham and Vancouver. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Like, but, it's true that you can get Indonesian food, Filipino food, uh, Singaporean food, Malaysian food, and all the different regions of Chinese food, and Korean Chinese food, and Japanese food. All in the 626 within literally like three plazas, four That's plazas. That's very true. And, and Borneo, Kalimantan, shout out yeah. to them. Super good. They're hella good. Uh-huh. They're from fuck, Borneo. You know what I mean? But right. but like you don't have that in like Sydney or... or, a, or I just don't think the density would be there. I, I could imagine in Canada they got everything because there's a, there's a ton of Asians in Canada. Yeah. But there'd be a lot more driving involved. It wouldn't yeah. be just like... <laughs> one place that's okay what I now now i yeah. i do i kind of know what you're saying now i yeah. kind of i agree with you now like yeah. i at first i was like that's a wild statement but now i understand like it's the diversity of the fact that they're all so close together and they're all really good yes yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah they're like all seven to eight to nine out of ten but priced at a 10 out of 10 in terms of per dollar ratio that's true i mean henry's cuisine have you been there yeah even henry's like that is I went there with my friend like last week and I was like, how does it only cost this much? Cheap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe because it's on Valley. And then Boston Lobster and just, ugh, yeah. All the OG restaurants. No, too. those those are both top tier spots. Those are yeah. top tier spots. Bistro Nas is Michelin too, yeah. isn't it? What what do we, do, using Bistro Nas as a jump off point, Andrew, what do we think of the high priceification of 626? Because there's a lot of Wagyu, a lot of Omakase, <laughs> A lot uh, Yang's yeah. Kitchen in Alhambra. It's like Yang's ultra kitchen. high end uh, yeah. Taiwanese. I almost want to say like shaoqi, like snacks, but like yeah, like almost like twenty dollars for Lu Rou Fan, like yes. the pork. That is pork. Restaurant. That is Christian Yang's it, restaurant. I grew up with him. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to him. He's and it's bringing fancy that. for a reason. Yeah. It feels very Silver Lake when you're in there, right? Because he's a fancy man. <laughs> he's a fancy man. He's a cultured no, man. So, no. So I'm saying, but it's getting away. Not that the mom and popness won't always be there, but it's getting away from it a little bit. Pro yeah. con, what do you think? I mean, it was it inev- inevitable as the high endification of America? Happened? I mean, I think it, it's just its own thing. It stands out because it's its own thing in a sea of sort of like what we we're just talking about. And he brings his own sort of taste and his own sort of col- culinary expertise and what he likes and then merges that with our cultures. I think it's actually kind of awesome to a certain extent. I mean, I'm mixed. Maybe I'm biased because like the multicultural comes together right. in me and sort of tasting his food. I'm like, damn, like you really paired these certain things. Well, it's almost together. like I want to say what French culinary techniques mixed with like Taiwanese snack. Yeah. Snack shop. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What well, do you have a favorite boba spot? Go to boba. If you're gonna If you're going to take someone out for boba, where mm. are you going? So so the most trendy spots. Mm. Chicha Sanchen is considered the top boba for tea specifically. For tea specifically, yeah. Bopo. If you want that Asian American vibe, shout out to Phil from Wang Fu. Yeah. There's also a lot Xing of Futong. Xing Futong. Xing yeah. Futong just because of the gold yeah. leaf and gold leaf and, is expensive. And, yeah, and these yeah, are yeah, just yeah, yeah, considered yeah, yeah. The, the, the top tier spots. But I think there's a lot of upper middle great boba spots. Like there's just a lot of good boba. So yeah. do you go to boba? Seven Leaves is kind of like Southeast Asian boba. I'm not gonna what? lie. I go to Bopo Mofo. And I go to Ten Ren, OG, like OGs. Yeah. I go to a lot of the, the OGs. Okay, Yo, Ten Ren slept on. Ten Ren, still really. I good. feel like it's slept on because it's not like hot and new and popping. Mm-hmm. It's like the quickly of this generation. Remember quickly, but, but it's actually right. but a higher baseline than quickly. very respectful. yeah, definitely, definitely okay. higher baseline. All right, All so right. you keep yeah. it fairly traditional with the boba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do any of the old school pre Asian invasion Americana spots like the hat? Or, you know, like Bob's, what is that? Bob's, Pre- Billy Berg's, Bob. Bob's Burgers? In, in is that Pasadena? still around? I don't know. They just got one with the, you know. the, the guy I know the hat, though, yeah. The hat. Or Pepe's, you know, there's the Do I still go stuff. to those places? Yeah, do you? I, dude, I haven't been to the hat <laughs> in so long. And, I, and that, there's one on Garfield. There's one on, like, Lake Avenue, right, in right, Pasadena. Yeah. Look, now that you're. You know, the 1960s America. But now that you're saying it, like, I, I, could eat a, I could eat the hell out of a pastrami sandwich right now. But I haven't because I'm just spoiled with the Chinese food diversity. Like I just eat Asian food. Okay. Always. All right. I gotta ask you about because I know you're you have you are a hundred percent Taiwanese, so you you yeah. are very well versed with Taiwanese food. I, I yeah. you just said you eat Sichuan food. What about the other mainland Chinese food, like northern food or like the skewers, all the shao kao spots, like the yeah. kind of the party shao kao spots? You know, you like see a bunch skewer, of the little skewer, little skewer. Yeah, the little oh, skewer with, the, with yeah. the time where they put one little. 
It's kind of crazy corn. because it's so small. I'm just like, oh, I got to buy like 50 of these. And and that little skewer, it's like they sing karaoke loud as hell. Yeah. Like it's blasting in your ears. Right. So for, those spots for, remind you of China though, right? It, it, you step into China yeah. when you're there. Yeah. And also the cutty spots that they have it in the backyard and they're cooking with coal, which I think might be illegal, so I'm not going to name the restaurant. But those Wait, are, are you talking about the restaurants that are non-listed on Yelp? They're literally just someone's running a private dining think, venture out of the I backyard. I think some of them are listed on Yelp, but like no one knows about them to shut them down anyway. Uh. You know what I mean? And those those really remind me of China. Yeah, I remember for a while you had to get uh, for Burmese food in mm. Monterey Park. There was like you just have to book it by calling them, oh. but it was just like run through somebody's house. Like it was oh, not wow. a that must have been bomb show. as hell then, right? Oh. I didn't. I, I never got to go. To be honest, I, I want to know your favorite Taiwanese spot in the six two six, like top two that you're like home style hits me at home. I my soul, dude. It's like your Taiwanese soul food. Where do you go? A lot of these, a lot of those restaurants closed down. I, that's true. Yeah, and a lot of them are more in Golden Heights. A yeah. lot of them closed down, but I will say PP Pot or PP Pop. Oh, over on Yo, uh, PP Garfield. Pop. You know who always talks yeah. about that. Phil Wang from Wang Fu. It's so he good. He talks about PP Pop. It's so Every time I goddamn see yeah, that's good. crazy. It's so. I've only been there good. once, honestly. I haven't yeah. been there a lot. The, but I know their rojen mean. being like the the like the scallion wrapped like beef rolls, they're made so different than like what was it noodle? What, what closed down? One hundred one noodle. Yeah, one hundred one noodle house. Right? All of them are done. I, I the one that was in uh, uh, Times Square Atlantic that sh- that's gone. Yeah, that one's done. But I think the one that was on like Valley or sorry, Garvey, to the bowling alley. Is it still there? I haven't yeah. seen it. Okay, is it still? Yo, I got a sh- shout yeah. out to One Hundred One Noodle Express because that was the first place uh, I got food from my mom's home province of Shandong. Like, and they had some deep cut stuff like the Joji and Shandong Shaoji and yeah, all this stuff. Yeah. Um, have you been to Jiangnan Spring? Why does that sound so familiar? Because it won like a Michelin recommendation. No, Zhang, Zhang, I think it's Zhang just... Zhang Spring. It won a Michelin. Is it Zhang just for, Spring? Okay. Just for Tung Yopeng. No, over on uh, Main Street. I think I've been there. Wait, what does it look like though? What are they... It's just uh, next to the... Zhang Nian. Zhang Nian. Is it Zhang's kitchen? No, it's Zhang Spring. Yeah, Zhang Nian Spring. It's on Main? Then it's... It's literally just this spot. Oh, I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think I've been there. Um, no. What, what do you think about the, the Vietnamese food? Golden Deli. Golden Deli is, I thought it was overhyped, but then I went there again and it's not. <laughs> and then um, Pho Super Bowl mm. is really great. The story across the street. Slept on because it's, it's in a kind on. of a not slept a good on. looking Their closet. egg rolls are different, way different than Golden Deli's and they're crispier. I like that, but I still like Golden Deli's because they're fat. Juicy. Yo, Golden Deli's egg rolls with they're the lettuce wrap. Crazy. They're crazy. 10 ah, out of 10, man. Uh, but they, yeah. What yeah. about Newport Tan, Newport Seafood versus Boston Lobster? It's like old school versus new school, right? Well, Bo- yeah, Boston Lobster was the main chef that left Newport Tan, I believe, and yeah. did their own thing. I still, man, I love both of them. I went to Boston Lobster for my cousin's birthday, like, or no, for my birthday, like uh, a few months ago. And I was like, some of the dishes are different. Some of the dishes are better. But like the beef that's at Newport Seafood, that like sauteed beef, like nothing can beat that in my opinion. That mm. is so goddamn good mm. to me. You can argue about the lobster dish and the crab dish. Mm-hmm. They're different, but I still like both of them. There's not a clear winner there, but that okay. beef. Right. You got to take a, a take someone out on a date. Okay. So you're trying to look for a vibe. Because, you know, listen, good food is everywhere in the 626. But yeah, yeah, a yeah. good vibe and good food, yeah. not every spot is hitting on that. So where's a spot that you're like, yo, the food is fire. And actually the vibe is pretty cool. I would take a date there. For me, it's always like a... A, a cultural experience and that that sort of makes the food even better mm-hmm. so man i don't like, in my mind right now it, it's screaming g wrong like g wrong oh G-Rong. G-Rong. shoot david have the we Peking. eaten there yet no, i gotta take out i gotta oh take my out. god i back. haven't sat yeah. inside and eaten yeah. there next time you guys come back we gotta go go there. gotta right. go to g so g yo yeah. g wrong is, is 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 considered pretty good and it's, it's peking it's, duck too in, in yeah. a way that i feel like a lot of people haven't had it if they haven't been to the 626 you know? Yeah, that's like, true. That is like a premier traditional Peking spot that everyone knows if you're from the 60s. All, right, all right, I got a low end date option. <laughs> Sit outside at Savoy. Yeah, Savoy. Savoy right. is great. Yeah. Gotta be Savoy. And that, their, their, their uh, high nan chicken is great. Yeah. Uh, hot pot. You f- do you have a go to hot pot spot? I feel like, do you guys agree with me? 626, not the most famous for hot pot outside of Heidi Lau. 
Like there's been some spots that came and went over the years and there's some chains from China, but it's like, not necessarily dude, like don't hot, underestimate hot central. Don't underestimate how huge the 626 is. Cause it's like Pasadena is in the 626 too. And like Rolling. almost Pomona, like diamond bar. I went to a place that was like in Roland Heights, Hacienda Heights that I forget the name, but the way they did hot pot was like very different. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. We're, we're more talking about West 626 well, are you right talking now? about? You're not talking yeah. about X-Pot. I'm not talking about X-Pot. It's like a completely different thing. It's, it's like a cut. Chinese chain. It's in the back of a... Yeah, it's in the... No, they, no they, one they, speaks English. It's in the back of like a plaza. They got some crazy high-end Chinese Taiwanese concepts in Roland Heights. Dude, there's that like, one spot. Not, I, Roland I Heights. I feel like there. Roland Heights is the hot pot place. Not yeah. Not like El Hamburg No, I not. agree. Yeah. I, I think the Taiwanese style hot pot was always better out there too. Yeah. Like the individual pot, that was always better out in, in the And Olympics. that's like Boiling Point, right? Well, boiling yeah. Point style. The slight Japanese influence yeah. style, right? Like the yeah. Shabu Shabu Chinese style. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Man, I make David, what was that one hot pot spot over on Valley that we... Shaolong Khan? That's... Shaolong Khan is... Shaolong Khan is good. Shaolong Khan is good. What about some... Let's talk about some old school spots. Did you ever go to Jazz Cat? No. I've never heard of that. You, you know what I'm talking about? No. That was very like, AZN. Like, very I heard it was. I don't even want to put it out there, but it was probably owned by some by some gangsters or something like that. Oh, really? You, you okay. saw that reflected in the crowd. Right. Where is it? In the where crowd. Is, of where like, is it or where was it? Does it still exist? Okay, here, here's another Here's another one. <laughs> Not to test you, but Dips Grill. Do you remember that one? No. Okay, yeah. That's I think those crazy. are spots these, that... These are AZN you, spots. You know right? what's funny, though, is that like when I was growing up, I didn't know any of the names of any of the restaurants that I would go to. I would That's just true. go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I might no, have a lot even of been there. You All know right. what I mean? To switch gears, Bistro Nas won a Michelin star. Yeah. Chefs from Beijing, a yeah. royal imperial chef. Yeah. What do you think? It's like one of my favorite restaurants ever. Like, their shrimp... Is their crispy shrimp blows my mind every time I eat it, and they had a lamb dish that I don't think is on the menu anymore. I need them to bring that shit back because that shit changed my life. Yo, what's missing in the six two six? What do you want to see? What about your travels in China that you're like they should bring this back? And then we'll try to think if they if six two six even has it. I mean, I, I when I was in China, I had a lot of like street food skewers. Mm. With a lot of different, like more options yeah, yeah, and yeah. bigger portions. That's what I want. Yeah. Cause I feel like that's what's missing is like the skewer places that have actual portions. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I, I gotta ask you about this spot, Kang Kang Food Court. Bro, you step foot in there, yeah. you're in China. Dude, that like, place is solid. Out of any other place, like right. that is the most that you will feel. They don't speak any English. Yeah. yeah. They, they, I mean, I'm sure they, they didn't accept cat or they didn't accept card for hella long. I'm sure they accept card now. They should. And but they also have the shaved ice. And their Shenzhen Bao is yes. still really good. It's still really good. And, and, there's, and, and their they soup serve, dumplings. Yeah. And they serve it to you Chinese college meal ticket style. Yes. Man. Like exactly. out of the cafeteria. Yeah, see, all that, it's, crazy. It, it's like a cafeteria yeah. too. Like, that's a spot that's never going to exist in Manhattan. It's really? only Why? maybe Queens might have a version of like that. Yeah. But I just, man, I wish. There was actually a spot of that quality in Manhattan somewhere. And like, and it's like be cheap f- comfort food. Oh, the shaved All ice right. too is like raw. It's uh, like it's it's it, they don't try to make it fancy, and that's why. Oh, I that's love interesting. About it. I I never really got into their shaved ice. The shaved ice is I grew up on that. I agree yeah. with you that a lot of street foods that you find in mainland, or even street foods you find in Taiwan, or street noodle carts that you would find in Singapore, you don't see that aspect. Dude, like the street food aspect, okay. you don't see it. Uh, yes, exactly. I will say what's missing is that there's a there used to be a pork belly bao, like uh, uh, these two brothers. A gua would, bao, gua bao spot. Yeah, that would make this in front of my apartment in Shanghai because I lived next to the Fudan Dashi, Fudan oh. University. Mm-hmm. And there would be a line like mm. 20 deep because they wouldn't come every day like the chow fan, chow mian lady. Right. She was there every <laughs> night. But them, they would come like, two or three times a week and there'd be like 20, 30 people waiting in line and they would fucking crush that shit and it was so juicy and it was perfect and never had a bow that was that good. Okay. Ever. Yeah, no, that's true. Gua bows, I will say, in the 626, kind of hard to find. Yeah. And kind of hard to find yeah. people will focus on it because it's kind of a exactly. to-go street food. Exactly. And there's huge tree pastry in Monterey yeah. Park that will do them, but it, they're kind of cold. They more focus yeah. on neuro dream in, yeah. in 626. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, what's, what do you think? I, I said oh Guo Kui is too Guo Kui's. Oh. Yeah, the, actually, the, New the, York had some Guo <coughs> Kui spots. 
There's yeah, more in Flushing. There is, there's some in Flushing. Oh, I found out there's one food stall that just opened up in Flushing that does uh, Huangman Jifan, the, the yellow braised chicken. You got to go get it, I got to go to Flushing. You got to go to Flushing and get it. I'm going to Queens tomorrow. I'm not going to lie. Flushing Flushing does have some crazy stuff. That's what I'm no, saying. No, Flushing. It, let, hey, let me just say. Flushing has saying. stuff that 626 doesn't have in the same way that 626 has some stuff that Flushing doesn't what, have. What does it not have? I got to go eat it. Um, A lot of... Like Wuhan ragamian, which is like the this like alkaline like sesame peanut butter noodle they eat in Wuhan. And Wuhan sai like is not something that we have. I feel like I've never even heard of that in in. And in, then so I, I think the diaspora is in well, Flushing Fuji, actually a lot of Fujianese food. Fl yeah. Flushing has more street food because it's more compact. It's more like a city, so they do have more Got like it. kind of street bowels. Like oh, they okay, have a cool. lot of beef. Um, I don't Ro want to the say, robings. Yeah, right? the robings, like just meat pies, different types of meat pies. I don't know where they're coming yeah. from, but. Yeah. The yeah. meat discs. Yes, yes, oh, yes. That's like, isn't that like Uyghur? Isn't that Uyghur? There, more there's more a, from Western China. No, yeah. sure. I know what you mean. There, there's yeah. a lot of different meat pies. And yeah, yeah, I like some Uyghur of them. cuisine too. Oh, Uyghur, dude, Uyghur Shin, cuisine is good. Dude, they have Dolan's. In, in, Dolan's is good. Yeah, Dolan's is really good. Yeah. yeah. No, there's actually a start to pop up a lot of spots in Manhattan as well. Oh, wow. Recently. Are they they're leaving China and coming here? Yeah, I can, <laughs> yeah, I think I, they're. I think I know, you know why. There's, there's probably a special <laughs> visa you can apply for. Um. Anyway, ultimately, man, I'll say this, guys: if you don't get a chance to go to a Chinese-speaking country, whether that's you know China, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, whatever, go to the six two six, go to the San Gabriel Valley, go to Flushing, go to Markham in Toronto, go to Richmond in uh, Vancouver, BC. It's like insane. I mean, listen, the food is cooked by people who are straight from there. Yeah. So it's authentic. It's somewhat authentic. You taste, <laughs> you taste what the natives taste in their yeah. homeland. Yo, yo, I, I, last thing I got to say, because I, I just don't want this to be pumping up. I got to say something I don't like. Okay. I don't like <laughs> gigantic Guangzhou style churn funds that are huge. Okay. I don't know. That's all I'm saying. It's not uh, my preferred style to the Hong Kong style. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. You're the talking From about you, yeah, I don't even want to say the name, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not as versed in Hong Kong cuisine, so like, what is that? <laughs> oh, so basically, the, in everybody thinks that like Cheng Fun or like Chang Fun is just one style that you get, that little, the shrimp in the rice wrap. Oh. And, but there's, in is Guangzhou. Like dim sum? Yeah, dim yeah, sum? In, in, yeah. Dim sum, but in Guangzhou, there's a like gigantic version. It's like a Mondo jumbo style, and they fit different and fillings in there. it's not good? It's just not my preferred. Okay, all right. You okay. know what New York has better of than L uh, than six two six flushing uh, Tong Hulu. Flushing got really good Tong no, Hulu. Different fruits, and I haven't right. seen that Tong Hulu. Maybe they got it now in six two six, but flushing, like I said, the like street the candy food fruits and the yeah. street snacks. They got different fruits. They got little tangerines. I'm eating the whole thing. Or oh, what? Oh, they, oh man, do the they have certain they, places. They have certain places, but it's not a highlight of the six two six. Yeah, yeah, it's not a highlight. Of the Bring six. Tang Hulu to the six two six with blueberries and mandarin. I'm sure and someone at the six two six night market is doing it. Anyways, guys, uh, you heard it here. Uh, just three guys who lived in the six two six who are just talking about the food out there. So let us know your thoughts down below. Shout out to Flushing, of course. Yes. Always good as well. Yes. Um, but yes. yeah, so guys, check Yo, out dude, Ryan's dude, stuff down below. Maybe we'll go to Flushing with you, bro. Yeah, let's go. I'm Help. so down. Bro, I want to go eat there. Like, All right, everybody. Until next time, we out. <laughs> Peace. Peace.